This is my Mark 1 Volkswagen Caddy, in which we're putting a 3.2 litre engine from an Audi TT. In the last episode, we resprayed the engine bay in preparation for the 3.2 litre engine to be put in. We gathered up all of the necessary parts to install the engine. Next, we fit a new clutch and pressure plate. Then, we carefully positioned the engine into the Mark 1 Caddy. With the engine in place, we proceeded to install the custom drive shafts. With everything set, the engine was now ready for the rest of the parts. But there's still so much more that we have to do before we can turn the key for the first time. We've got to sort out the fuel lines and the coolant system, the exhaust, the wiring, the list goes on and on. The first thing I'm going to tackle is sorting out the exhaust system. I've painted both of the exhaust manifolds in some high temperature paint and this is the paint that I used here. I've also got some new gaskets and hardware to go with it. And to go with the freshly painted manifold, I got myself a nice shiny downpipe. When choosing a downpipe, you have to match it to the manifolds that you have. I'm using the Mark V platform, so I went with a Mark V downpipe. Also, I resprayed the heat shield in matte black and I left it inside silver so it can still reflect heat. So these are all of the parts that I need to get the front half of the exhaust system fitted. So let's get cracking. The first task was to install the downpipe. Without the manifolds, there was plenty of room to manoeuvre it into place. Once the downpipe was out of the way, I could then proceed to fit the new manifold gaskets and put a couple nuts on to hold it in place. To ensure a proper seal, I tightened down the nuts in sequence before torquing them down. Perhaps a bit of an overkill, but it's better safe than sorry. After installing the new downpipe gaskets, I lifted the downpipe back up and securely tightened the bolts down. Once that was completed, I moved on to installing the freshly painted heat shield and securing it in place. So that's half of the exhaust system fitted now. The other half will be fitted down the line. The only thing that I can say about this downpipe is it's quite close to the steering rack. So I think I'll have to heat wrap it to save the steering rack from getting burnt or damaged. So we can start moving on to the next step now, which is something that I've been a little bit worried about. And that is dealing with the wiring looms. With this engine, there are two wiring looms and they both need to go through that hole over there. When I took the wiring looms out of the TT, I labeled up all of the plugs so hopefully that makes my job a little bit more easy. So yeah, let's see how it goes. Instead of pushing the side of the loom through the hole, I opted for the longer but more manageable route. I fed the other side through the hole. Despite its length, the smaller plugs made the task much easier. If you're tackling a project and need your loom converted, don't hesitate to reach out to Engine Swaps by Russ on Instagram. Just mention my name and he'll take care of you. After securing the first loom into place, I get on to laying out the second engine loom. I clipped on some of the plugs to make sure it was positioned correctly so I knew how much wire to feed through the firewall. There's a little bit of an issue with the wiring loom, let me show you. So I've got the wiring loom sort of laid out on the engine where it needs to be. I remember in the TT this was plugged in over here and this ground strap was plugged over here. So it's sort of in the right area where it needs to be. The big issue is this plug over here is way too short. I'll show you inside the car. Inside the car, this is the other end of the plug where it needs to plug into there. And this goes into the fuse box. So it will sort of be in this area here, which makes this plug or the other plug way too short. So the solution for this is either extending this side of the plug or that side over there. So let me just quickly whip out the looms and then extend the wires. So this is the plug that we need to extend, but I won't make you guys watch me solder every wire. So with the power of editing, so now hopefully the wire is long enough to go through the hole. So let's get it in to see if my measurements were correct. So I've got the engine loom all back in place and where it should be. So let's go and check if the plug reaches. That's not the one there and this is the one that we need. So that is more than enough length on there now and it will plug into this plug here. So yeah, that's all good. So that's all done now and great news the wire fits. 
We're going to jump straight on to the fuel system now and come back to the wiring later on in the episode when we can connect everything up at once. Before recording this video, I had already installed the fuel line. When dismantling the TT, I kept the fuel lines just in case it was needed. Luckily, it came in handy as the caddy lines weren't in the best shape, considering they are over three decades old dating back to 1987. As this is a late 3.2 litre engine, I only have to run one fuel line from the tank to the engine. The return line is on the fuel filter, which I'll mount next to the fuel tank. So we're currently underneath the car, and this is where I'm going to mount up the fuel pump. It's the same place where I mounted it for the PD-130 swap. So we've got the inlet for the fuel pump over here, and it will go directly to the fuel tank. And then moving on to the next piece of the fuel system, which is the fuel filter. We've got the inlet, the return, and the outlet. The outlet will go directly to the fuel pipe, and I'm thinking of mounting the fuel filter over here. The only problem that I can see putting the fuel filter in this position is that the outlets are too close to the edges. But I think I've found a solution for that. On the Audi TT, it uses these fuel pipes to connect to the fuel filter. What I've done is cut off these connections and ended up with these. So what my plan is to do is to get these connections and put them directly on a fuel pipe and then a little clip here. That way I can plug it directly into the fuel filter. Now that we have a rough idea of where the fuel filter needs to be positioned, I began by marking out the bracket's mounting location. Next, I drilled the two holes. Since the nutset tool wouldn't fit due to the tank being in the way, I used a trick using a bolt and two nuts to pull the nutset into place. Then I could install the fuel filter using a bracket I purchased from Amazon. Following that, I mounted the fuel pump and connected the fuel feed pipe to the fuel line using the new connector. These are the moments where having a car lift would be a game changer, as working on my back can be quite awkward and makes the whole job more challenging. Once everything was in place, I connected all the fuel pipes to the filter and then tightened them onto the tank. And it's looking pretty good. The final step was to connect the fuel line to the engine using a hose that again, I salvaged from the Audi TT. It's particularly convenient because it's designed with a shape that bends away from the heat shield. This will minimize any potential heat related issues. Now we've got the fuel system installed, there's still one more thing that we need to do before we can cross it off the list. And that is running power to the fuel pump. The fuel pump's power is triggered by the ECU and then sent to the fuse box. Once the fuse box receives the power, it can then send it down the loom that goes to the rear of the car. The loom goes all the way down into the side here, goes all the way to the back and runs the rear lights. There's also a wire for the fuel level sender. My loom isn't in the best condition and they're virtually impossible to find brand new. So I decided to get some made. These looms are a one-to-one -one copy of what is originally fitted into the caddy. And to make it even better, each wire is labeled just in case you'll need it for the future. Another thing that I made is some rare bulb holders. These are virtually impossible to find, so I thought the best way is to just get some made up. I got a couple of these looms made up, so if any of you guys want one, you can contact me on Instagram or send me an email, which I'll put in the description below. To save the headache of fishing the wires through, I taped the old loom and the new loom together and pulled them through the inner panel. Once that was completed, I fed the second part of the loom, which handles the driver's side lights, through the holes in the frame. Moving to the passenger side rear, I carefully connected the plugs using the labels on the wire to ensure the correct location. Then I secured the ground wires for the rear lights and number play lights using a small bolt. I also repeated the same steps for the driver's side. And Here's the final result. It's reassuring to know that the new wires are now installed, replacing the old brittle ones with new fresh wires. The new loom doesn't include a wire for the fuel pump, so I used a wire from the Audi TT loom, added the correct connector and inserted it into pin 14. After routing the wire and ground wire to the fuel pump, I added ring terminals to the ends. I soldered the wire for added security. While this might not be the conventional method, it adds a bit of reassurance.
Finally, after sorting out all of the wires, I tightened down the ring connectors to the fuel pump and covered them with the rubber boots to protect them from the elements. And that is all of the fuel system connected up. Hopefully my idea with the connectors on the fuel filter works and they don't pop off. I think it's really cool how the fuel pump wire can plug into the original harness which makes it feel quite OEM. Speaking of OEM finish, on the Mark 1 cluster there's an oil pressure light. If the oil pressure in the engine drops, the light will flash red on the dashboard. On the oil filter housing on an Audi TT, it uses a single oil pressure switch to send a signal. But in this case, that won't work with the Mark 1 cluster. The Mark 1 needs a high pressure and low pressure switch to send a signal to the cluster. I've been having a good look at the oil filter housing and I think I've figured out where I can mount the two sensors. I was thinking I could put one in this place over here and then put one at the front where this screw is. I'm not 100% sure if this is the correct way to do it, but I guess there's only one way to find out. Using a 24mm spanner, I removed the single pin oil pressure sensor that we no longer need. Then I unscrewed the screw at the front of the oil filter housing. I'm reusing the oil pressure sensor from the original Caddy engine. First, I installed the high pressure sensor, followed by the low pressure sensor. Once they were in place, I snugly secured them down. Some of you guys might have noticed on the oil filter housing, there's no oil cooler and I've got it here. As the 3.2 comes with a little bit of a bigger oil cooler, it kind of gets in the way of the mount. I think I have two options. Either I can remove the front mount to run the bigger oil cooler, or I can use a Mark III Golf oil cooler and keep the front mount in place. So I'll get that ordered for the next episode to see if it fits. As we're no longer running AC on the car anymore, the original belt won't fit. So I found a shorter belt that will go around all of the pulleys. This is the belt that I found, so I'm just gonna get it fitted. I carefully installed the smaller auxiliary belt, ensuring it's routed correctly to power the water pump and alternator. After recording, I noticed that I forgot to fit a lower pulley, so I got that installed. I then installed the starter mower that matches the gearbox and flywheel. I secured it with the top bolt, ensuring the space is installed, and then tightened the lower bolt into place. Once all that was done, we could then finally start the engine. I'm just joking, we still got a lot more to do before we can start the engine for the first time, but we're heading in the right direction. It seems like I'm gonna have to order loads more parts for the coolant system and for the oil cooler, but fingers crossed the engine will start first time. And don't forget, if you want a loom for your caddy, send me a message on Instagram or email me. I don't have that many left, so make sure you're quick. But that's where we're gonna leave this one. If you've enjoyed watching, don't forget to hit that like button, and if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you on the next one.